Hello, Willingboro ECDC. I'm Mr. Lascal, the art teacher. Go ahead and wave. All right. As you know, we're on an asynchronous learning day, which means you're watching this on YouTube, which is a great platform. So you can rewind, fast forward, or pause. But I will be asking you to do normal class things with your microphone turned off for the most part. Or if you say something, you can say it with your microphone off. Okay, so I will be asking for some responses. And um, yeah, we're gonna have some fun today. Let me let, uh, tell you what we're up to. We're gonna read a book. Okay, let's see if we can see it right over here. Owl Moon. We're gonna draw a picture of an owl. And we're gonna color our picture of an owl in today. All right, uh, we're gonna have two screen breaks for five minutes each. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll have some fun making our pictures as we go along. Now, before I even begin, I want to make sure we know how to use our thumb signals. So, <clears throat> shake those thumbs. Let me see a thumbs up. That's going to mean yes. Or you can go like this with your head. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Shake those thumbs. Thumb to the side. That's going to mean maybe, or I don't know. You can also go like this with your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shake those thumbs, thumb down. Okay, that's going to mean no. You go like that with your head. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You can play along with me. All right, shake those thumbs, double thumbs up. That means absolutely, positively, yes, yes, yes. Shake those thumbs and double thumbs down. That means... No way, no how, no time, never, ever, whatsoever. Shake those thumbs, give me a smile. All right. Um, we're also going to be raising our hand. When you raise, your, well, <clears throat> this is like for during class. When you raise your hand, hold your hand up at the camera. Don't use the Google hand raise, okay? I won't be able to uh, respond to it, um, especially if I am uh, like reading a book or something like that. Uh, remember, questions should be who, what, when, where, why, or how. Um, they shouldn't be a statement, and we should definitely not be off topic. Uh, also, uh, yeah, if you raise your hand, do it towards the camera, because if <laughs> it's a little bit of a different camera here. If you raise your hand like this, can't tell that your hand's up in the air, okay? Let's see if I can do it even higher. Yep. And if you do it so high, I can't even tell that your hand is being raised. See, it was really up, up there high. So when you raise your hand, just go like this. So you can kind of see the camera like that. And then I'll be able to call on you. Wait to be called on. And then when I'm done calling on you, you can unmute your microphone. Boop. And then you can say what you uh, think the answer is. And then you can mute yourself again. Boop. So we can learn uh, together as a class. Uh, remember, your suggestions are important, but I do want to stay on topic. So without uh, further ado, we already know our hand signals. We're going to jump right into our book called Owl Moon. This is by Jane Yolen and illustrated by John Schooner. Owl Moon. And there we have a dedication and an owl. A shadow of an owl. This is really nice. This looks like watercolor right off the bat. Watercolor and it doesn't even look like ink. It looks like a straight up watercolor. This was probably done really, really big and they kind of shrunk it down to fit into this book. Oh yeah. It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. There was no wind. The trees stood still as giant statues and the moon was so bright the sky seemed to shine. Somewhere behind us, a train whistle blew, long and low, like a sad, sad song. I could hear it through the wooden cap. Pa had pulled down over my ears. A farm dog answered the train, and then a second dog joined in. 
They sang out, trains and dogs, for a real long time. And when their voices faded away, it was as quiet as a dream. We walked on towards the woods, Pa and I. <laughs> Our feet crunched over the crisp snow and little gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him every now and then to keep up, and my, uh, and my short round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out. If you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always says. I had been waiting to go owling with Pa for a very long time. We reached the line of pine trees, black and pointy against the sky, and Pa help, held up his hand. I stopped right where I was and waited. He looked up, as if searching the stars, as if reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask. Then he called. <laughs> the sound of a great horned owl. <laughs> then he called out. And then again, after each call, he was silent. And for a moment, we both listened, but there was no answer. Pa shrugged and I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brother all said, sometimes there's an owl, and sometimes there isn't. We walked on. I could feel the cold, as if someone's icy hand was palmed down on my back, and my nose and the tops of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. But I never said a word. If you go owling, you have to be quiet, and that makes your own heat. We went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I'd ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry, for the scarf over it was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kinds of things hid behind black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing, and the snow below it was whiter than the milk in a cereal bowl. I sighed and Pa held up his hand at the sound. I put my mittens over the scarf over my mouth and listened hard. And then Pa, pa called, I listened and looked so hard, my ears hurt, and my eyes got cloudy with the cold. Pa raised his face to call out again, but before he could open his mouth, an echo came threading its way through the trees. Pa almost smiled. Then he called back, <laughs> just as if he and the owl were talking about supper, or about the woods, or the moon, or the cold. I took my mitten off the scarf of my mouth, and I almost smiled too. The owl's call came closer from high up in the trees on the edge of the meadow. Nothing in the meadow moved. All of a sudden, an owl shadow, part of the big tree shadow, lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently with heat in our mouths, the heat of all those words we had not spoken. The shadow hooted again. 
Pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it was landing on a branch. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at one another. Then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without sound. It flew back into the forest. Time to go home, Pa said to me. I knew then I could talk. I could even laugh out loud. But I was a shadow as we walked home. When you go owling, you don't need words or warm or anything but hope. That's what Pa says. The kind of hope that flies on silent wings under a shining owl moon. The end. Give me a clap. All right. Did you enjoy that book? Double thumbs up. Very nice. Very cool. All right. Now stay on mute. I want to hear your best owl call. Very good. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yes, we can calm down. Some of you already stopped. Thank you. All right. That is very fun, right? So this is about the great horned owl. And I mentioned that they migrate. I, necess I thought that uh, the great horned owl was a migrating bird. And they really don't migrate, at least not far from my research, okay? Uh, this was a few years ago when I researched the... They actually live in all those areas of um, North America, from Canada to the East Coast to the West Coast, down through Texas. They actually live in Mexico, Central America, and South America. So that's where they actually live. They don't actually migrate. So they are a very plentiful bird. They're everywhere. And if you have an adult with you, you can go owling. What's owling? Yes, owling is when you go out late at night, early in the morning, when you can st uh, on on a moon that you can kind of see with. So that's like a, a not a cloudy day, but a see see our owl. We have a crescent moon or a larger. All right, you don't want to go on a new moon. A new moon is when it's really 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 dark out. All right, you want to go when there's some kind of a moonlight out and no clouds. Um, if you have a full moon and there's clouds, you should be able to go owling, all right, with an adult. And you go out quiet as you can, and you hoot. You see if you get a call back. It takes a lot of patience, a lot of time. I've done it twice, and uh, it's really kind of fun. You have a great area in Willingboro that should be wonderful for uh, – it is one. It is wonderful for wildlife, but you should have a few owls that live down by the, uh, by the river, by the creek. By the, um, yeah, you should definitely have them by the lake over there. Um, yeah, I've seen some very interesting animals over there when I've, when I've been there. I've even seen, I've seen uh, wild turkeys and uh, I've seen a fox cross the road. You have a very diverse um, um, ecosystem right by that waterway that's amazing for, for, for wildlife. You have deer. I mean everywhere um you may have even had a deer in your in in your yard at one point you definitely have raccoons and uh possums so we're going to um oh i wanted to ask you a few questions before we uh moved on um do you know what the word nocturnal means that's our word there it is that's our word of the week Nocturnal is a word that describes an animal that is awake during the nighttime. Okay, they sleep through the day and then they are very active at night, like an owl. Okay, before we take our first break, I want you to think of some animals that you think are active at night. All right, you can get a paper, pencil, and crayon also. 
Okay, it's, it's a, this is a screen break for five minutes. Since we're on YouTube, you can fast forward this. But if not, I suggest you get away from technology, get away from the screen. You could even turn the monitor off for five minutes. I have the audio visual timer set. When that red disappears, then the uh, alarm will beep so you can listen to it and hear for it. And uh, I will check back in with you shortly. I'll see you soon, everyone.
All right, welcome back, everybody. So I hope you got a paper, pencil, and crayon together. I'll explain that in a little bit. First, I want you to tell me maybe some animals, before we went on our break, what are some animals that are nocturnal? Remember, nocturnal means animals that sleep during the day and are active at night. Okay, we already know the owls, very active at night, hunting, looking for food. Go ahead and shout out some answers. Very good. Um, since I can't call in any individual students, I'm going to tell you some of the animals that I've found that are nocturnal. And you can, you know what, you can give me a thumbs up if you knew that these were nocturnal animals. Um, we have the bat, raccoon, badger, even the honey badger, uh, possum, opossum, oh, not really sure how to pronounce that one, sorry guys, uh, hedgehog. Uh, squirrels, like flying squirrels, they are nocturnal. I did not know that one. Uh, squirrels themselves, I guess, ground squirrels or tree squirrels, I guess they are uh, during the day, but flying squirrels are nocturnal. They they work at night. Um, foxes, I knew that. Gray foxes and red tail foxes are both uh, nocturnal. Uh, and I knew the skunk is nocturnal as well. Okay, that makes sense. The skunks and raccoons are very similar to me in a way, except for the smell of the skunk. Have you ever smelled a skunk in the distance before? Yes? You think so? Not at all. Be lucky that you haven't. I've smelled it before, and usually it's in the distance somewhere, usually, and it's, it's pretty strong, even when it's houses down. Yeah. Um, sometimes... Sometimes our animals, like dogs, will get hit by a skunk, as they say. Um, tomato sauce, I've heard. I don't know how true that remedy is. Didn't have to use it, thank goodness. All right, we are going to um, draw today. We're going to be drawing this fellow over here. We could turn into a fellowette. We could definitely put some eyelashes upon her. Uh, we can make it a, you know what, let's make a female owl. A uh, female looking owl. All right. Um, we're going to first need a paper and pencil and crayon. Um, I well, We really don't need the crayons yet, but it's always good to have them, especially for my art class. This right here is why I like the pencil. Mine's getting pretty low. Yeah, I use mine a lot. Um, this is the most important part of a pencil, I think. <laughs> well, I guess... The point can be very important as well. Um, best part about the pencil, you could always erase whenever you need to. Um, so if you're going to use a marker, make sure it's okay with an adult. I prefer that an adult's next to you because it can get messy. And if you get wet marker on your sleeve or on your hand, it's easier to clean off right then and there. All right. Um, if you get it on some kind of uh, material or the table, if it bleeds through the paper, so that's another problem. If it bleeds through the paper, you're going to have to clean that up uh, pretty fast, especially if it's one of those uh, permanent markers. A lot of us have the washable markers, which you still have to clean if you get it on yourself. All right. So, uh, yep, just be careful if you're going to use a marker. Colored pencils are totally cool. Um, I'm going to be using a crayon, a dark crayon, a black crayon. These are, uh, yeah... An illustrator cartoonist's friend right here. Okay, animators love outlines. All right, um, because you're able to see them. So I'm going to be drawing my picture on my paper so you can see it using a black crayon. Uh, your paper, any paper should do, as long as you have a flat working surface, hopefully next to your computer so you can see what I'm doing while drawing it. I'm going to be holding mine up in the air so you can see it. That's why I'm going to be using this right here. This is my trusty clipboard, and any kind of paper is fine. I'm using copy paper. I've had students use uh, music paper. That was a new one I saw the other day. It actually had uh, um, uh, signatures on it for, uh, for music. You could actually write uh, music on there. I've seen the old teletype type of uh, uh, paper. Those are really, really good. Those have like those 
holes on the side. Okay, the beautiful thing about that is not a lot of people seem to use the that 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 kind of paper anymore, and it can get stretched really long. All right, so you can you could just use a little snip snip cut cut. And you have a little rectangle for yourself to work in, uh, or you could do a um, um, a really long one. I don't mind. You can cut, cut, cut all the way and make it a big piece of paper like this. That's fine with me. <laughs> there we are. And uh, you can make your picture really, really big then. Um, whatever you'd like uh, should be fine. And um, if you don't have anything yet, that's okay. You could pause it right here. And welcome back. You just unpause when you have everything. Okay, enough talking. Let's get to coloring. Well, let's get to drawing first. All right, I'm going to hold my paper this direction. What do we call that? Vertical. All right, if you said vertical, give me that thumbs up. All right. So, yeah, we're holding the paper up and down vertically. Um, we're going to draw our owl on a tree branch, as you can see. And it's okay if you jump ahead. It's okay if you uh, if, if you uh, if you want to draw something else or something different. That's totally fine. It's absolutely acceptable. The art room is a place you should be exploring creativity. Uh, but I do ask that you don't interrupt other students, so you don't unmute your microphone to any degree, uh, because there are some students that do want to work step by step to help create. Uh, this owl. So um, don't interrupt, but feel free to draw anything you'd like. All right. So we're going to make our owl on our vertical paper. First thing I like to start off with are the things he stands on. Where is it? There it is. One, two, three, four. We have four toes. What shape are they? Go ahead and show me. That's right. They can be an oval like this. Or you could try to do an oval like that. And that's fine too. There's... Looks like an egg, right? Eggs are fine. They're ovals. We're going to draw four of those eggs. Ovals. One, two, three, four. And you want to use it somewhere around here on the paper. Kind of low. All right. So here I'm going to do my, my ovals. One, two. Two, I like to put them next to each other like eggs. And then I go straight over and I do two more. All right. Now I connect them with a line like this. It doesn't have to be straight because it's going to represent the stick. Okay. It's going to represent a branch. So you go like that. And you could even make the bottom part of the stick or branch. Like that. Now, this side is probably going to be... I dropped my crayon. So we're going to draw this going over to this side so we can kind of connect it to a tree. So you can go like this and get a little wider if you'd like. Kind of go down and curve down. This can go, you can follow a little bit of the curve if you want. This is going to get a little bit smaller and I'm going to go up. I'm going to go out. Check that out. You could try to make it that kind of shape also. Okay, you don't have to put leaves on because the owl's supposed to be, um, this one is supposed to be in the winter time. We could put snow on this if you'd like. To put snow on, you just go like this. See how I did that? But you don't have to add snow. The main part is the owl. And we only have pair of talons here. I guess a pair of uh, owl feet. 
Owl toes. Owl toe. All right. So now we need to have the body. This is the fun part, the big part. Make it as big as you can. Stay on the paper, though. It's going to be like the letter U. Remember how we made our letter U last week? It's going to be just like that. You're going to go up really high. See, Well, you don't have to go super high. But you want to cover both of these feet. So you're going to go over the toes like that. There's our letter U. Just like that. <laughs> now we add the wings. This on this side is a little easier because it kind of looks like a C. It's really like a parentheses. We've been doing a lot of those lately. This is our uh, what it'll look like. And one on the other side. Now we want to add the owl's head. So we can do some more parentheses like this. And it's called a great horned owl because it has feathers like this that look like horns. They're used for listening. It's ears, but they do look like horns. So what we're going to do, kind of go down just a little bit. Then we connect it like this. All right. This upper part, we could put two round eyes, just like I have. I'm going to put some eyelashes on. If you want to, you may. Your owl, your creation, your choice, your world. Feel free to explore it with eyelashes if you want. You don't even have to have round eyes if you don't want. Now, what's the uh, black part of the eyeball called? If you knew it was called the pupil, give me that thumbs up. We have gone over that before. I'm going to make some big pupils with a little bit of eye shine in it. That's when you kind of color them all in, except for a little bit of reflection. Okay, so I'm going to leave that white in the middle because it looks like maybe there's moonlight bouncing off of uh, the owl's eyes. Next. What shape is that? Very good. Give me a thumbs up if you knew it was a beak. Give me a thumbs up if you can, oh, no. Show me the shape that we have to make for the beak. Very good. The triangle. It's a triangle pointing down. We did that last week and I think the week before. We're doing a lot of upside down type triangles. So that's fine. The beak will be an upside down triangle or you can make a rhombus. Your choice. I like to make it easy. And look, I don't have a perfect triangle. It's okay if your picture isn't perfect. Sometimes that happens. Oops. Or, dun dun dun. You just kind of go along with the flow, and it's okay. Uh, remember if um, remember the most perfect paintings that are hanging in fancy museums across the world are hanging there because they are not perfect. And if someone tells you that artwork is perfect, they're talking out of uh, expression for it for themselves. They mean that it is perfect for them. It is not a perfect painting by any means. It may be perfect to them. It may speak to them. Okay? But nothing, even, even fancy art, is not perfect. Okay. So we're missing something. Oh, that's right. We are missing stars. Well, okay. We'll add the moon. Okay. So what do we call that moon again? I said it once already during class. That's right. Crescent. 
And you can put it on either side. I'm going to make mine small. And I have mine like that. All right. And you can put stars over here. Uh, remember, you go. There's a few different ways we can make our stars. We've gone over that. You could check out the uh, the uh, Winter Fairy episode if you want to know how to make uh, different stars. There's like four different stars or five different stars I go through. Okay. And different techniques on how to make them. If you want to try, here's how I do it. I make like a letter A without the line in the middle yet. Now I'm going to put my arms across. There's my middle part of the A. And now I'm going to connect the hand to the opposite toe. Same with this one. This hand touches the opposite toe. That's how I make a star. Now, in between here, we need to have what lines? Wavy lines? Fine. Yes, yeah, scalp lines? Totally cool. Looks like shingles? Yeah, it does. Shingles are stuff that go on the roof. Remember? We've made those a few times. We've made waves for our oceans a few times. We're going to try to do that again. We're just going to make them uh, medium size. You can make them tiny. Here, I'm going to make some tiny ones. You can make really big ones. You can vary them as much as you want. All right, I'm going to actually add some of these extra ones in there because I want to. My picture, my drawing, have fun with it. We're going to take our second and last five-minute screen break right now. If you'd like, you can color while we're on our screen break. Or if you, if you want to take a true screen break, you can get up, go to the bathroom, have a sip of water, do stretches, even do finger exercises. We've gone over those before. Uh, if you're going to leave the room, remember to tell an adult that you're leaving the room. I'll see you shortly.
Welcome back, everybody. All right. We're going to have a few moments to uh, color uh, our uh, owl in as a group, if you'd like. Uh, let me see what your owls look like. You can go ahead and hold them up maybe to other class members on the group. Very good. Show it to someone maybe in your room. All right. I'm going to start by coloring my owl. I would like to color my owl brown. So point to the one that's brown. That's right. This one's the brown one. This is actually burnt sienna. This is going to be the color of most of my uh, owl. I'm going to use the back of the crayon to color it lightly. I'm going to also hold it about halfway up. I'm going to pinch it kind of like a duck bill using my crab claw pincer, just like this. And I'm going to lightly color it in. I have my owl flying away. There we are. I'm going to start with the wing. I'm going to go around the beak, around the eyes. I'm going to color the first, up to the first part, I'm going to color brown. Now, you can have fun with your owl. Remember, this is your picture. You can make me a rainbow owl if you would like. You could color it um, um, any colors you really want. I'm going to stick with uh, brown at least for the main part because uh, the, the great owl, a uh, horned owl, is uh, usually the brown with a little bit of like lighter brown and like there's a little bit of white sometimes up towards the eyes. All right. So that's what I'm going to do for this one. It's very light. And now I can use uh, the point for a darker color. Perhaps in between the um, the uh, the wave design we have there. Pretty cool, right? I might do that for all of them. And then maybe I'll pick some rainbow colors. Maybe some gray. But if I'm going to stick with rainbow colors, what are my rainbow colors? That's right. Give me a wink if you knew red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Very good. Those are our rainbow colors. And have fun with it. I'm going to now work on the uh, the beak. And I'm going to turn the beak and the, um, and the feet the same color. Oh, is this the color I think it might be? Nope. That's okay. I'm going to use this color. What color is this? That's right. Orange. I'm going to color in the beak and the feet. I'm also going to now switch to this color. If you knew that was yellow, give me a wink. And that's going to be for my stars and my moon. You can sign your paper at the bottom and have an adult take a picture of it and send it to my email address. You should know it from the Google Classroom. If not, you can sign on right now and check out my Google Classroom um, uh, email address and send it right in. Uh, I hope you had fun. I'll see you next week. So long, everybody.